I'm Dara. And I'm Steph, the Philippine Eagle Foundation. And here with us is Malaya. Welcome to the second episode of Malaya Breaks the Internet. For today's episode, we are going to learn about wildlife trade and how it affects the ecosystem. But before that, we are going to share the story of a Philippine Eagle. Be sure to be comfortable wherever you are right now so you can listen very well to the story. Are you ready? This episode is brought to you by the Philippine Eagle Foundation, FBC Utilities Incorporated, Ultican Builders Incorporated, and Having Info. Hi! This is a story entitled An Eagle's Feather. Based on a story by the Philippine Eagle Foundation, Min Fong Ho, and illustrations by Francis Alvarez. Flying high above the forest of Tambala at sunrise, Kalayaan spots some monkey. Food! The young Philippine Eagle swoops down to follow the monkey. Where did it go? On and on, Kalayaan flies in pursuit of it. He notices the landscape below is changing. Where are the trees? Where are the animals? And who are those people? Scared, he turns to fly back when BOOM! There is a shotgun blast and a sharp pain in his wing. In a flurry of feathers and blood, he starts to fall and keeps falling. Palayaan crashes onto the hard ground. He is dazed and weak and unable to get up. Suddenly, he hears voices approaching. What is happening? He's been shot, father. Kalayaan hears a boy's voice shouting. Must be a hunter nearby. Hurry! Kalayaan feels a gentle touch of small hands and big arms wrapping him in a cloth and carrying him. Then everything turns dark. He wakes up. Kalayaan doesn't know where he is. Instead of trees, there are metal bars around him. He tries to fly, but his hurt wing is bounded tight. And who's in that other corner of this cage? Another eagle? What is this place? Kalayaan asked. Why are we here? We are safe here, says the other eagle. You were brought here by the fine villagers after you were shot by hunters. My name is Pimpin, and unlike you, I was born and raised right here but why would people want to shoot us do they dislike us no in fact there was a time when people thought of us as kings of the sky because we were the strongest birds in the whole of the philippines Pimpin passes but that was a long time ago over the next few months as kalaya and swing heels the two eagles spend their time getting to know each other more Pinpin talks of how, according to what her mother told her, the forest had been cut down for timber so that eagles have less and less space to hunt for food. That's when people started hunting us down, Pinpin says. And there are not many of us left now. So we are kept in these cages for our own safety? Kaya and asks. And I will never see my forest home again? Don't lose hope. Pimpin comforts her new friend. Someday, we may be both be set free in the forest, just like my mother was. She told me to live for that day when I grew big enough to be released, and after that, I could find a mate and build a nest and raise a baby eagle in safety. And me? Kalayaan asks. Will I be set free again too? I hope so, Pimpin says. The two eagles stare at the bars of their cage as the leaves of the forest beyond shimmer in the moonlight. One day, after a very long time, Kalayaan and Pinpin wake up to a quiet morning. The day of their release back into the wild has finally come. They are wrapped in a cloth and taken to the forest and at first light, they are set free. Kalayaan and Pinpin are so excited. One, two, Three, and off they fly! Back in the forest of Tambala, there is no cage, there are no wounds on their wings. The air is fresh, and they feel so happy to see the lush forest and the boundless blue sky. It's so beautiful out here, just like in mother's stories, Pinpin says. 
everything feels so new, but it's so good to fly out. Wait, this is where we belong, Tintin. At last, we are home. From the branches and leaves, they hear a familiar voice. It's them, says the boy. Hurry, father, who wave up to the eagle, smiling broadly. Kalayaan swoops down and flaps his wings to thank them and continues to fly off with Pintin into the dark. The end. Now that we heard the story of Pintin and Kalayaan, it is said that our Philippine eagles are still being hunted. The decrease of the Philippine wildlife is caused by hunting, deforestation, and illegal wildlife trade. Today, we are going to explain about illegal wildlife trade and how we can stop it. Illegal wildlife trade such as elephant tusks for ivory, pangolin scales, tiger skin, and pet trade are just one of the reasons why these animals' population is decreasing. It is driven by high demand of people who are adopted to the usage of wildlife resources for food, medicine, and textiles. In some parts of the world, extreme poverty pushed locals to use illegal wildlife trade to make a living. Overexploitation of natural resources have been a problem not just in the Philippines but in a global scale. It is one of the reasons why a lot of species in the world is at the brink of extinction. According to World Bank's Global Wildlife Program, illegal wildlife trade value is estimated at $10 billion per year, making the wildlife crime the fourth illegal act after drugs, human trafficking, and firearms. It is organized by dangerous groups with international networks. For 50 years, our natural resources have been victims of this act. Laws and treaties were created and implemented by world leaders. CITES, also known as the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, is an international treaty to which country adopts and implements the agreement at a national level. In the Philippines, one of the most illegally traded animals are reptiles like snakes and endemic sailfin lizards. They are being hunted for food and exploited into the local and international black market. Birds and monkeys are illegally kept as pets. People love to keep monkeys as pets, especially the infants because they are adorable and intelligent. However, pet owners do not understand that as monkeys mature, they become aggressive and eventually attack their humans. This is why these animals are carelessly released into the wild or surrendered to wildlife rescue facilities. The Philippine Eagle Center is one of the wildlife rescue facilities in the Philippines. We have Philippine eagles that were also victims of illegal wildlife trade. In July 1, 1971, Diolo was sold to a concerned citizen who later on handed the Philippine eagle to the authorities. And Diola became part of the conservation breeding program who hatched Philippine Eagle Pag Asa. In 1981, Philippine Eagle Chai was smuggled to Taiwan, and in 1984, he was brought back to the Philippines. Some animals remain because of lack of appropriate sites or due to some form of disability, they are no longer candidates for release. However, these injured and malimprinted birds still have a chance to save their species from extinction by being part of the conservation and education programs. The RA9147, also known as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act, covers the protection and regulation of all the wildlife resources in the country. Aside from the existing laws on wildlife trade, as a citizen, what can you do to stop wildlife trade? 1. Be aware. Learn about the animals that can be found in the country. 2. Share the knowledge with your friends and everyone around you. 3. Support wildlife frontliners. Forest rangers sacrifice their lives to protect nature. They need proper training and equipment. 4. Report wildlife crimes. With the power of your hands, you can stop illegal wildlife trade by taking a photo or a video as an evidence and report the incident to the legitimate law enforcement. 5. Get involved. Join advocacies and organizations or even sharing facts from social media helps spread awareness of this issue. Today, the Philippine Eagle Center is home to more than 100 animals. Most of them were brought to the center, injured from the wild, and treated here at the PEC. Help us protect these animals. 
and be part of the conservation by spreading awareness about wildlife trade. Remember to do the five ways on how to stop legal wildlife trade. The future is in our hands. We can do this together. This episode is brought to you by the Philippine Eagle Foundation, FDC Incorporated, Oticon Builders Incorporated, and Harry Ebon, together with Phoenix Philippines Foundation and Elanco Animal Health. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please don't forget to share this knowledge to your family or friends. Till next time, stay safe!